Welcome to workshop three. It was a dark and stormy night. This workshop is about using the weather and the seasons effectively in your writing. Don't hesitate to let the weather help you set the tone of your story or novel. Even though writers are often discouraged from beginning a novel or story with weather, such descriptions in a landscape can be a great way to create atmosphere, mood and suspense. Disruptive weather such as storms, thunder, drought and heat, heat waves can be added to create a mood of danger and suspense. And often what's going on outside is reflective of what's going on inside of characters and plots. Weather is important in our everyday lives. It has the power to change plans, alter our mood and forms the basis of a lot of small talk. It's such an important part of our consciousness that it should be part of every scene in a story. It can be used to supply background atmosphere to the action. If your readers don't get some idea of what the weather is like in your story and its effect on the landscape, then there'll be something fundamentally missing in your story's descriptions. Weather is a constant in all our lives and it's impossible to ignore it even when we're indoors. Undoubtedly, weather affects people's moods. People tend to feel happy on bright sunny days and sad when it's cold and rainy. A storm brewing makes the characters feel tense and a howling wind makes them jittery. Severe cold can freeze people's emotions as well as their bodies. So think about showing the weather rather than telling it, as in the following example. Red-faced passengers, people with wet coats and wind-blown hair, came in stamping their feet and rubbing their cold hands. In this description, we know exactly what the weather is like without having it directly reported to us. The image is much stronger in the reader's mind than if they had been told it was a cold, wet day. Their senses have been stimulated by the description. So this is called showing, not telling, and it's a very important rule in creative writing. Sometimes you'll have to convey events quickly because their detail is not relevant to the story. Sometimes you will have to dramatise the small details because the particulars will be of great significance, either for the character or your story in general. So telling the story summarises abstract emotions in ways that don't quite satisfy the reader. There are times when it's appropriate to write, she was angry or he was sad, but there will be times when the reader wants more. They will need to see the scrunched up paper bouncing off the wall. They will want to see your characters laughing or crying and interpret events for themselves. So he was sad, if shown, might become his shoulders heaved and he let out a long, frail sigh as he turned towards the door. She was irate, might become she glared through him, past him, stabbing the desk with her pencil. Showing generates more vivid sensory images and arouses a more pressing intrigue than telling. You can also use weather in a story to reflect the way you want a character to feel. This is called pathetic fallacy, and I give a definition of, of that uh, term in, in the Word document. You can create subtle effects by avoiding extreme forms of by avoiding extreme forms of weather. It may be sunny but with a cold breeze, or overcast but not hot. Dressing can be more effective in conveying a mood than heavy rain. You can also keep the character, the weather, changing in line with the character's changing feelings. Clothes, clouds can be useful for creating atmosphere and suspense too. So in the attached document, I've included some reading passages that have some, some nice effective descriptions of, of weather and the seasons and also your next writing exercise. Good luck.